Hey, what's good with the YouTube? It's your boy Rojo. This is a convict's perspective, and I'm joined by my homie, Big Flacco's in the building. And I think we're going to smash and dash and slide on through the whole lot of energy today. Oh, Flacco's got a little. I got a lot. We'll see where it leads us, man. Flacco said he's got something good for me. I don't even know what we're going to talk about. So let's see what he's talking about. Okay, so, you know, we've been touching base the last couple of weeks, man, about the reintegration, the yards, the bulldogs, SMY, actives, inactives, right? And there's one thing that, like, we're not really uh, pinpointing or focusing on. So today I did a video earlier about uh, everybody's fighting for their existence, actives, inactives, and so forth. <clears throat> and, and, I mean, some people may think that, that that's, that's a, a light statement. It really isn't. The key here in this whole... Sorry about that. Uh, Gunner was... Is where the CDC stand in all this? What role are they going to play in this in this war? We haven't discussed that. Are they going to go back to the gladiator days where they were staging fights, setting up actives and so forth, the, the uh, corrupt tactics they used to use? Because administration in general, right, has had a long, extensive history fighting with the actives, especially within the, the you know the black movements, the North Daniels, and so forth. Each each group deals with these issues a little bit different, but that doesn't mean that they're not subject to being attacked. So I'm wondering. If this is is more of a uh, of a ploy, is this a planned attack to where administration is just and its uh, officers are just going to have to go with the flow? Are they going to be staging more and more situations to try to get these actors off these lines, reopen the shoes, and so forth, man? Because ever since when I went to the system, right, who was our main opposition? Administration, right? When it comes to SMY, they don't really have that same type of uh, uh, energy. When it comes to going at it with the cops and so forth, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen, right? But their whole plan is not to really go and to fight the injustice of the system. Whereas these groups right here have been a thorn in their side for years. So what I'm trying to get at is where, what role are they going to play? You know what I mean, are they going to start staging more attacks? Like before with the North Daniels, right? They used to look at us as the headaches. That's a fact. We go to guards, we'd be outnumbered 30, 40, and we end up setting it off. And they used to tell us, why can't you guys just program? Well, because the dude's trying to tell me to put on my shirt. That's why I can't program. Well, you're not going to tell him that, but that's the reality of it. Yeah. So they do a lot of fucked up shit, man. Like, I got moved one time, man. I took off on some dude that had to go in the shower. I've told that story before, right? They moved me from fucking uh, that floor to a floor that was totally away from everybody else, right? The last fucking cell, there was 44 Southsiders and two validated NLRs. And I was in the last cell. And this was in the 90s when there was all that fucking <laughs> throwing gas and piss at each other and shit, right? The state things occurring now, you know what I'm saying? Um, so far, they, you know what I mean? You have the issue in Salinas Valley. That's kind of fishy right there. I don't think that that was a, 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 a mix up. I think that was deliberate. Now you got the issues in Solano, you know what I mean? Which is about 20 different issues we're hearing, different yards and so forth. So now what role is the administration gonna play in all this? Or are they playing a role the whole time? Cause no one's, you know what I mean? We've talked about how sneaky and how fucking corrupt the cops are, man. But what is their agenda in this? There has to be an agenda to this. Is it to, is it to actually try to severe and end the active's role out there in the main lines? There's multiple ways to look at it, man. My first initial thought is that they're already playing a role by doing this because they know the GP policies that, yeah. you know, the main three groups cannot function on any yard with trash. So if they bring what they consider trash, we don't consider nobody trash other than weirdos. You know what I mean? But if they bring the people to the yards, you know what's going to happen. The administration knows what's going to happen. You know, Bulldogs, they don't got no bad jacket other than, you know, they are they are they used to be Northerners. They're going to take off on them. They're not part of the end of hostilities. They've, it's never been successful. Me and Flacco did a breakdown. 34 separate times they tried to integrate over one year. 34 times. The yard went down. So the administration knows what's going to happen. The Northern Rider type dudes and, and the other, you know, new era gangs. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're not going to share a yard. The actors are not going to share a yard. So they are complicit in the things that are going on because they know better. Now, is there more to it? I think so. Because, Man, a lot of prisons are getting shut down. You know what I mean? Tracy, Susanville, et cetera. 
The the closing, that's losing a lot of jobs. You know, you fill up these shoes and these holes and, you know, people start adding some more time to their sentences by catching cases and stuff with new inmates still coming in and older ones having extended release dates. You need more bed space. Again, more bed space creates more officers, more overtime in the shoes, a higher pay rate, a higher rate of um, compensation per inmate per day in the shoe versus general population, just like Flacco said. The union dollar, dollar gets, bills. The unions do go up too. That union no. is the most powerful union, man. The yeah. more money their officers make, the more they're going to get kickbacks. Yeah, that's a fact. No doubt. And, the, and and as far as gladiator fights go, I think they're under way too much scrutiny now. With you know a lot of them having to have body cameras, a lot of more cameras inside of facilities, as well as inmates being able to record stuff from out of their cells. It's going to be hard for them to stage things like that. But this whole act of trying to reintegrate, you know, rival competing groups that don't like each other is in itself a gladiator act, man, because they're going to gladiate. We're going to call that a new word. Today, they're going to gladiate. Straight up. You know who's going to win on all this, though? The most? Who's going to really win? Any of them outside officers or outside free staff that are bringing them, them Flavo and them cell phones and all that stuff, then prices are going to about to go up. Straight up. The prices are about to go up, man. Real talk. They're already astronomical, too, man. Motherfuckers are paying thousands of dollars for, you know, a $99 oh, smartphone. Risking, I'm not risking my career. You could rent this, this phone for the night for 500 bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck, man. I take that. That's crazy. You know, you know, what, what, do you, what do you, what, what would you say is their ultimate goal? A money thing? A, a what? Yeah, I mean, like for for so many years, they've, they've done everything they can to try to break up these groups, man. You know, the North Dales and Sudanos weren't involved in the beginning. We all know that. That that just came about how it came about. But from the eighties, they started to see them as being very reckless and being a headache. So what did they do? They started the validation process for the Northern structure. And what they did with with the Sudanos is they started validating them as MA associates. Any of those that they felt that were influential. So therefore, if you take off the influential members, then what you have out there is a bunch of degenerates and degatos and dolphins. That's how it was in the 90s. Apparently, that didn't always work because, you know, the, the communication system at that time, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch up to whoever's, you know what I mean, has to go. So what they did from there is they created the SMY. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we'll create this SMY. We'll make this an attractive environment for people, these young people. Oh, you don't have to go over there. You can come over here and do whatever you want. You can uh, use drugs, fuck with punks, whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfuckers are like, man, I got life. I'm going over there. You know what I'm saying? Now, that hasn't worked. They've Now, over there, they've turned into being more violent and more gang-prone like how it was in the 70s and 80s. So it's like they found, they tried to find a solution. It just didn't work. So now they're trying something different. You know what I'm saying? That's all I see from it, man. But what is their goal? Is it to, is it to teach these SMY cats a lesson? Because they, maybe they got a little bit big-headed out there in these SMY guards? Or is it to disrupt these actives? Or maybe let's kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. And we'll pick up the pieces with whatever's left over. Because you got to figure, happen. man, the majority of the damn yards nowadays are, are what you would, what, what, what the groups would consider no good yards. You know what I mean? Yeah. All the 50-50s, all the S&Ys, they outnumber the GPs by, by a huge margin. I, I don't know the exact statistics, man, but, you know, I would say for every one GP yard, there's at least four that would be considered no good. So you slowly get, they could slowly, man, they could slowly flip the whole damn GP thing to where there would basically only be one large institution that would house all people who consider themselves to be active. Think of, think of it like this, right? How, the, how you okay, we're going to send five. We're going to send five SMYs over here, five Bulldogs. What's going to happen? They're going to get off. They're going to get off. We're going to send five more, five more, five more. They're no longer bringing any more actors in, right? What's eventually going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Yep. The whole yard's going to flip. Yeah. Eventually, you know what I mean? And people people during these time errors, man, get caught slipping, man. You know what I'm saying? These youngsters, man, they're going to get caught with a piece. They're going to get caught with a tie, whatnot, man. It's just going to, it's going to cause more uh, 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 attention. So, I mean, if... Like I said, when I seen administration, like the, the different rumors and different things we've heard, like I've been told by different people what's happened, right? Um, you know, releasing two bulldogs or, or five bulldogs with a bunch of North Daniels and Sudanos and whites, 
what do you expect to happen, man? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? And they ended up, they had enough. I mean, this is very rare. North Daniels usually don't do this. I heard there was like about like a bunch of them. You know what I'm saying? Like more than there should have been. You're supposed to minimize. So this is what I don't get. You're supposed to minimize the, the uh, output of your manpower when it's wartime. Yeah. You're supposed to hit your priority targets and you're supposed to move them off the yard. It's not even so much about hurting your opposition, about just removing them. Yeah. That's what war is all about on a mainline. People think mainline is about, okay, let's go kill someone or let's do this and do that. No, it's about setting the tone, removing people. If you get access to take a life and it's working, then fuck it. That's how it is in prison. But the ultimate goal is just to get them off your yard with the least amount of manpower. Like yeah. we, used to stand, we used to stand like, you know what I mean? Our, the hit squads we used to have prepared would be like, okay, we're going to send three to five people with pieces. Five is a little bit too many. Cause they're going to see that come. I'd rather send like two or three, let them just get busy, but have that backup squad come with about five or six heads. Let them do the hit. Bam. Cause you come two, three, they're not going to really suspect anything. Right. You come, you come in a group of five. That's like two and three, man, you could peep that out from a mile away, especially if everybody got their boots and jackets on. You know what I mean? So those are the things, not just fucking, Oh, there's a fight. Let's go jump in like 12, 14 dudes stopping on one dude. You know what I mean? Come on now. That's not how it's supposed to go down, bro. You know what I'm saying? And if that's the thinking process, if they're, you know what I mean? They're going to, they're going to lose these yards because CDCR is relentless when they have a goal in mind. And what I mean by that is, is they run this shit. Ain't no fucking prisoner run no fucking prison. The guards run that shit. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to keep on continuing to, to find whatever avenues to create whatever issues, because as soon as they get off, okay, we're on lockdown for about two weeks. No problem. Easy money. You know what I'm saying? So um, I was just thinking about it, man. I mean, I'm playing out all the possible scenarios. What actually happened, we kind of predicted it. You know what I'm saying? We said this was going to happen. Um, but I'm wondering where it's going to go from here. Yeah, like you were saying about flipping yards, man. It'd be If they wanted to reintegrate everybody and, and, and if they just put – act, they tried to take actives to SNY or, or 50-50 yards – Bro, the, the general population would be depleted so fast, they'd all be in the hole. That's the goal, though. There's, just, there's too many SNYs. The, the numbers are too vast for them to, to establish. That is the goal, bro. I think that is the ultimate goal, is to fucking get rid of the GP and just have one fucking non-designated yard. So, therefore, all these fucking dudes that have these certain policies and, and convicts that want to run yards, you're going to have to take action. Think about it. If you keep on doing this and you create that where there's no GP, What's going to happen? Think about this, bro. If, if the administration put, say, say they took one big prison, I don't know what's a big one, like Avenal or something, put all the Serenos on a couple yards, put all the Northerners on a couple yards, all the white boys on a couple yards, all sectioned off. This is North, this is South, this is white boys. Would be That would pretty much game over them. You know what I mean? They'd have one institution, bro, and the rest would be chaos. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be like that. What's that movie uh, uh, where they fucking, The Purge. It's going to be The Purge out there the main line. That's what they're going to start doing, bro. You have 15 minutes to handle your business and shit. Have everybody come out and handle the business. I mean, you know. Like I told uh, you earlier, too, Flacco, the numbers of people, you know, the, the GP population, yeah. it's not growing. It's not, bro. It's only going to get worse, bro. And, and, the, and the, <laughs> the attraction for gangs out there in the, in the communities is not there anymore. They're fucking ruining them as soon as they get to the county jail. You know what I'm saying? What I, I, I gotta stay, I gotta sit here at the bench with my hands with my hands on my lap for fucking six hours. Shit, you think how many eight year olds want to fucking do that, man? Either one, they're gonna get pissed, or two, they're scared. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, the numbers are gonna dwindle. The S and Y is only gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until they're gonna have to what's gonna happen is the, they're not going to be considered like the, they're protecting this and why they're going to have to keep the active segregated because they can't go nowhere. I said this all a long time ago, right? I really feel when they dismantled the NR, right? What the NF did and how they enforced the North Daniel, the rather Northerners to learn the North Daniel bylaws and be responsible to them and create this whole different program. I really think that pushed a lot of hint their way. You know what I'm saying? When I first came to the system, it would be common to see an OG fucking, even if he was a cop on the street, but he was solid in there with a big old fucking bro shot, bro. Get relation up about how it was in the 80s and shit. You would see those old timers playing handball and fucking shooting peanut and shit, right? You don't see that no more. You know what I'm saying? You see fucking from 18 to 30 and a couple OG, a couple older cats, you know what I mean? 
you know, very rare. But before, man, you'd have those OGs. Yeah, they'd get high, they'd do their thing, but they knew they knew to walk in twos. They knew to be on their toes. You know what I'm saying? They knew not to get in debt. And when it was time for war, they handled their business. We had a whole, we had a stronger crew back then because of, of the people we had involved as opposed to now. Now yeah. it's like, fuck, you know I'm mean? I, I didn't have to write no fucking five by, like no fucking NA questionnaire like this when I first came to prison. The HSPs were given verbally. You know what I'm saying? You know, you'd have to write all this shit, be at your fucking door, everybody would file a report. I mean, you're living in an environment. I get it for security precautions to learn in the assay, right? But who wants to do fucking three, four years, man, fucking on a yard where you got to fucking do something every day like a fucking job? You know what I'm saying? And not even really get the chance to enjoy your time. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I agree. They come up with more rules every day. You know? just, like, just, like, just like the state of California with new laws that drop every January 1st. You know, it's it new policies. Way, it's fucking goddamn household policies are that long now. Bro, they pushed a lot of good hint away, bro. That, I mean, dudes that were non-political OGs that were fucking about that action, but you fucking were Tecatos or fucking ripping and running. You know what I mean? They, they come in every couple of fucking months for a new case. You know what I'm saying? That was their life. You know what I'm saying? But they handled their business in jail. They, they handled their business. Yeah. They could be fucking, they could be high on fucking car, got not now, know everything on the yard more than a fucking first termer. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I mean, real talk, man. You know, those implementations changed everything. You started seeing a lot of bros fall off, and then you started seeing the quality of people that were pushing these pushing these lines for the movement. It was totally different. You know what I'm saying? Because before, I mean, not only that, before being a structure or in our member meant something, bro. You know what I'm saying? It really held prestige out there in, in the prison system or out there in the streets. Yeah. When they did all that. It pretty much fucking depleted any fucking recognition that you can give them. Yeah. Yeah. Some people looked at him, oh, yeah, he's a bro, this is that, right? But overall, it wasn't the same, bro. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't looked at like as far as in high regard like it used to be. To, you know, and even the recruitment that they started recruiting certain soldados, it was fucking terrible, bro. I would see dudes that were pulled as, as bros, and I'd be like, man, like, why are they even sanctioning this dude's status? And that's not to prejudge or act like I'm better. But I know what the original NR members were like back in the days. You were on San Quentin Six Yard with them. You know what I'm saying? I was on the yard with them. They were sharp, seasoned, educated, to a T. Not all this fucking, oh, you don't even know your bonds yet? You're a bro? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of shit is that, man? I know, I know before I joined the NR or the NF, uh, man, I'd, I'd see the bros in, in the C's and be like, man, I want to be like them. <laughs> you know? Like, it, it was... You know, it was something to, to push push for back then. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, man, times have changed. That's all. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You can see, I, there used to be a big difference between C's and B's, too, after those yards, too, though. You know what I'm saying? The C's were more fucking – they kept things simple because everything was organizational. It was uh, financially based. They didn't give a fuck about fucking doing a 10,000-word spill. They want, If they could do it in 50 words to get the point across, that's all they needed to do. You know what I'm saying? Um but yeah, I think that's created all this mess too, though, man, that, that we're in today. And that was created by administration. You know what I'm saying, too? They've seen the changes and they offered them, okay, look, we have a special program over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I mean, SM, S, the, the, the blowing up of the whole SNY yards, you know, originally there was Mule Creek, you know, and maybe a couple little secret places, you know, back in the 90s, you know, where people would go hide and stuff, but yeah. And that stuff blew up to took over the whole system. You know what I mean? And that was the Man. that was the end of the the rise of any of the groups, bro. Bro, they were relentless, so bro. Like it, thing that it was about these ones, right? Remember San Quentin? You weren't there in Carson section, how? Huh? I've been in Carson. The first year when it was the ad say? Yeah. Oh, it was fucking they were bad, bro. They were bad. I, I used to laugh so hard at some of the shit that they used to say though. You know I wasn't, when I was there, they weren't talking no shit. Oh, dude, they were fucking it was the, bad, the first and, When I was there, the first and the second tier were the whole. Third, fourth, and fifth were uh, 10 and over. You know what I mean? The the, the regular reception dudes. It was just oh, okay. like a tier, but everybody pretty much, I thought everybody was active. I mean, there might have been a couple, but they weren't saying nothing. You know, the last time I was there was probably 99, I think. I was there. Chavo was there, but he was already all bad. z -Bop was there. Let me see who else was there. Uh, man, all kinds of cats, bro. 
And it's just amazing to surprise me because these were dudes that were saw that one time and now they're fucking acting like J cats, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was fucking mad. I could never see myself doing that. So, I mean, I guess, it, I guess now, um, you know, let that, let that cell door be the bell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to see who's really about that action, man. The administration has a plan. They do, bro. Do we know what it is for sure? No, but I mean, reasonable deduction and just basic, simple uh, prison understanding 101 will tell you that there's an end game to what they're trying to do here because they know that this is going to result in violence. So they're willing to accept this current level of violence that's happening now and that's going to continue to happen until these movements are are done or they've reached whatever goal they have that we don't know. It's going to continue. So there's a game plan in it. It's not just, there's more to it than just, hey, let's have these guys fight. You know what I'm saying? There's there's a bigger picture somewhere. You know, and I, I, I can't quite grasp it. You know, a lot of it's going to have to do with finances for sure. But it could be it could be a strategical plot to, man, have all the actives in one place and have everybody else just inmates. Yeah. You know, they may do. They may send them to prisons that give them less resources and all that, man. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the, the administration knows what they, they're they doing, man. It's just like with the stuff that happened in Corcoran Shoe. Probably only about 20 of them people know exactly what the ultimate goal is, too. Well, see, the only thing that they need to know is my department operations manual tells me this, the DOM. This yeah. is what I'm going to do. If I want to keep my job, whether I agree with this or not, I have to act in accordance to this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if something goes wrong and a lawsuit's filed against me, I have I have legislation I have the legislation right here that's been passed. This is what the law says. This is what I must do. That's how they got covered in Corcoran. You know what I mean? For all that corrupt shit they did in Corcoran, bro, and they were fucking fucked up up there. They still got away with it, bro. Because you know what? They could not find them guilty in the court. Everybody could sit there and know that they did, did this shit deliberately. They staged fights and were shooting people. They said that they were acting in accordance to the department's operations manual. They beat the fucking case, bro. You know what I'm That's what they're going to do here. Yeah, I mean, the the operations manuals out of touch with reality, you know, and that's that's, why they start, that's crazy. That's why they start to put memorandums out there, and that's why they put all these safeguards. It's a protection net, bro. They're not stupid. Yeah. Okay? All this has been planned. There's yeah, a lot. A lot of this stems from people on the streets filing lawsuits and inmates as well about segregation and not selling people up that are of different race. You know, because people do that. They try to think, oh, why Why do they got only Mexicans housed and only whites housed? You know, that's segregation. And they try to they try to beat these laws by filing these lawsuits, not realizing that the inmates want to be segregated like that. They think they're being forced into that stuff. Active GBGM with an active fucking gang member? <laughs> it's gonna be, that's going to be a know, massacre. I know a, few that may, I know a few that may like that, though. <laughs> so do I, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, what's going to, I mean, they, people on the streets trying to think that they're doing the right thing by saying, you know, yeah. you, you should sell up white people and black people and it doesn't matter where they're from. That's they're, they're, they're acting like it's segregation from like the thirties and forties and shit. And that's not the case. It's done like that based on prison politics. It's not done. Yeah. It's not a racist thing the way it's set up. You know what I'm saying? It's gang politics and people will yeah. put them lawsuits and then, It'll get written in the legislation, and then the department operating manual, the damn dom, will say we have to put a black, a white, and a Mexican on this yard. But they're at war. It doesn't make no damn sense because it's just people just don't understand. You know? Yeah. It's not even, in the end. In the end, there's a goal. I don't know. Financial overthrowing the traditional prison gangs is something. We'll wait for Bala's next video, bro. Well, he'll probably tell us, huh? Yeah, seriously. Sounds about right. You, know. <laughs> you got anything else, Fox? No, nah, this is just this is a little topic I thought we'd be discussing. It's kind of a little bit different than everything else, man. It's interesting. You know, you know it, it's, it's, you know, for the viewers out there, let us be clear. We don't know what their intentions are. We're just throwing out different variables, you know what I'm saying, of what possibly could be going on in their minds. Some of them may, may make more sense than others, but there's a plan in motion. There's a reason why they're doing all this. And definitely believe that. that this isn't just because they feel like reintegrating people. There's more 
there's way more involved because they don't care. They don't care. They get paid the same no matter what. Their paychecks don't change. So there's an end game in this. And only time will tell what that is, man. But uh, if you guys got any comments, you have anything you want to add, any of your thoughts about what you think's going on, let us know in the comments. It's your boy Rojo, Big Flacco, and we are out of here. Enjoy your Monday, y'all.